pick up uh, the wheel lifted. Hello you two people. Today is the day we go for a drive. Yes, finally, I can take it for a test drive after all my mods. Uh, before we go, let me just tell you, I'll give it a good clean. Uh, about three weeks ago, I give it uh, wash, clay bar, three stage polish, and it's looking pretty good. It's got its imperfections here and there, but overall the car, I think, looks top notch, except for the front bumper. Now, you know I got a Delta styling bumper, I've shown this on Instagram, but I don't think I've shown it in a video. But I've got some bad pink problems. I don't know whether you can see all of them pimples. I move across in different lights. Now, as you will know, it was, uh, it's been about a year since I had this on and painted. About six months after that, which is about last September, maybe something roughly like that. All of these um, little pimples started popping up. Uh, I think there may possibly be water in the uh, lines when they were painted. The other thing is as well, it's full of chips, stone chips. And that goes back to the first track day. I took it on after it was painted when someone came out of the gravel in front of me and just peppered it with stones. So it's what lets the car down really. And I got some chips on the... Uh, the um, splitter uh, the other thing is with the bumper as well a crack there and I've got some cracks coming there so overall from a distance I think the bumper looks amazing but up close it's the one thing that lets the car down which is a bit disappointing but it is what it is right so that's the outside of the car cover and what I've been up to. We all want to know what the mods feel like. So we're going for an MOT and I get a chance to have a proper drive. So I'm going to head off now. I'll probably get the MOT done. After that, we'll just switch some cameras on and I would have done a couple of miles driving and I can give my feedback on what I think of it. So yes, let's get on the move. Radio, some good news people. We passed the MOT. Um, what's interesting is the second year or the second MOT with the sports cat. What was the one I bought? Scorpion, I think. The Scorpion sports cat. So I passed the first MOT. And uh, second one now is passed flying colours. Um, so, yeah, pretty chuffed about that now. Um, I've had the MOT in Pit Stop Ferndale, if you know the area. I now got to go and get some fuel and I am going over to Tesco and Aberdeen and I'm going to pick up some stuff over there so I'm making a shopping trip and a fuel trip but in the middle of this is one of the best roads going which is um, Aberdeen to Marty Mountain uh, road so it's a good opportunity to give the car a little test um, obviously I've done a few miles getting the MOT so the first thing I'll tell you about is the engine mount that i done gearbox mode remember i done a poly cushion now well first thing is it was extremely stiff if you remember the video and that was because when i went back and looked at the listing uh stupid steve went and ordered um the uh polyurethane plastic not the, uh, not the rubber so that's why it's so stiff but it's, it is harsh but i actually don't mind it the car vibrates a bit especially at idle but for but for track it's, it's going to be fine i don't think i'll change it uh, I had a look while I was in for MOT and there's no cracks, it looks fine. So that's going to stay as it is. The one thing I will mention, a lot of people on the Facebook groups will say to you, um, if you're suffering from a wheel spin, to fit one, uh, fit one of the rear motor mounts, torque mounts, whatever, and they'll stop wheel spin, which I'm going to tell you now, it's a lot of rubbish. I always knew it was a lot of rubbish and now I've proved it for myself. It, it doesn't stop uh, wheel spin, it's just a... Uh, that's messed up to me if you think it does. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. So many things we've done that we want to talk about. So we've done the um, uh, the hard race roll centre ball joint, bump steer, and correction, and obviously the bushes. Uh, what I can tell you is the, the response, the steering response, is absolutely immense. 
so I only have to just like flick the wheel left right uh, and the car just darts where you're going <coughs> in my last track car my focus I had done quite a bit to that and that was quite responsive um, but I never done no bump steer correction and I never done no road centre correction uh, and these are standard are quite lazy I find when you turn the wheel left to right that initial response and that that's for a few things uh, is to do with uh, the bushes obviously the road centre correction has, but I think a lot of it as well is the bump steer correction because in the video if you remember I explained to you how your wheels want to straighten up when you actually put that turn in so everything about the car is trying to soften up the response of your turn in. it's still a great car don't get me wrong but it is razor sharp now it really is probably the most responsive car for steering inputs that I've ever been in, definitely that I've ever owned. It is uh, it is really good, it's unbelievable actually. So I'm pretty chuffed about that. Um, nice. Here we go, some lovely twisty corners, I'm going to give it a little test. All within the speed limits of course. Um, so yeah, actual driving of it, a little bit more harshness due to the bushes, but that's fine. Uh, say the direction on it and the steering input is just phenomenal. Uh, definitely uh, one of the best things I've done for the car so far. How we'll translate to the track is is another story, but it's not. It's, it's going to be good. There's no way that it could be a negative. One thing that I don't like, and that's that I have I've connected my anti roll bar back up. I think in one of the last videos I mentioned that I um, don't run the the front anti roll bar. I have a drop link disconnected. I have done for the last six months. I haven't track tested it yet. The reason for that is because I don't have an LSD. Uh, it gains me a lot more grip on the inside wheel and the corners and I'm feeling that since I've connected the back up so that's got to go I'll probably do a full anti-roll bar removal at some point um, but that's one of the things I'm going to do now is get a drop link off I'm going to do a track day test with a drop link on drop link off but it, it makes a big difference and if you watch enough of my videos got to know things about me. I like to try things that no one else is doing. Uh, I, I think the bump steer correction was something that uh, is something you just don't see people doing on Fiestas much, especially not on YouTube. Uh, and not running a front anti roll bar is something you don't see people doing, but it's something I've wanted to try for years. Finally got around to do it there. And it is a massive improvement. But like I've said in the previous video, you have to have suspension stiff enough to do it. You go disconnecting your front anti roll bar on a standard suspension setup, and you're just going to roll into the corners. Like I've got eight kilogram springs on the front. I'm not sure. I think the standard springs might be something like a three kilo spring, so I'm much stiffer. My suspension can easily cope with the extra, the extra load. I actually did some testing on how much spring rate comes from a front anti roll bar so if you want to know that I can do a discussion video on that and I've also looked into my scrub radius as well which is a uh, an, another um, topic that I could bore you a little bit about but my goal with this car is to make this as good as handling as I can possibly do with the limited knowledge I have and, and ability and and it's getting it it's feeling really good the mods we put on so far are great the back bushes say it's all a bit of a package really but the car just feels brilliant from front to back um, there's some things I want to change on the back end I've got uh, since I've changed the ride heights I'm getting a lot more banging with the shock absorbers that's something I've discussed in other videos before they topping out I'm gonna finally fix that once and for all. I did make a change. I swapped from the rear coil over to a divorce spring. But since I've done the ride outs, I've got a little bit too much preload on, on the shock, so I've got very limited movement. So the car basically now I can feel it, it, it you only gotta drive around the roundabout and it's lifting the rear wheel. Not such a bad thing. 
um, it's good for trap but on the road any little bump I've got so little travel in my shock ribs always bang 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 so I've just ordered helper springs now this is something I, I argued with a supplier about a long time ago that they need to be they need to come with alpha springs but nobody seems to take on board what i'm saying but i'm gonna do that myself i've also signed up and watched um a handling and suspension tuning seminar from race hq that was on and that was brilliant that that opened my mind up to how everyone is setting the coil over wrong you can forget all the preload stuff um it's um it's far different to how you should be setting your coil always up so I've learned some new things from that and when I get the helper springs I can implement what I've learned from there and it should give me a much better feeling on the back end. Right so here we have it, that's my little uh, drive over the mountain. I'm now going to go and get my fuel, head back home then and uh, edit the video, get it out to you. But in the meantime, look after yourselves. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little video. Probably going to be short but uh, you see is what it is. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.